This video will explain the hyperband algorithm for AutoML. AutoML refers to the general practice of hyperparameter optimization in machine learning. In this case, this algorithm is going to show a way to speed up the evaluations of different hyperparameter configurations. So hyperparameter optimization can be defined as a discrete search space of the units that make up deep neural network architectures. So in this example, there could be six different categories of a neural cell, five different learning rates, and seven different regularizations. Altogether, this would make for 210 configurations. The problem with evaluating all configurations is that training deep neural networks all the way to convergence typically takes a long time. So the idea of hyperband is to speed up the evaluation of each configuration. So this can be done on three dimensions. You could do early stopping, which is where you train it for maybe a fixed amount of epochs, or you say the loss isn't changing too much after each uh, step, so we're just going to terminate training. You could train on a subset of the data, so for example on the 50,000 training images for CIFAR-10, you can imagine training on just a subset of maybe even just 100 images of each class, so, and that would probably be a little extreme, but something like that would, be, would speed up the training because you'd get through each epoch much faster. And the other idea, and it doesn't really translate to images as much, although you could think about doing maybe like a grayscale image or sort of like normalizing each pixel value to be more discrete more than 0 to 255, but if you have like a uh, tabular data set, you might train on a subset of the features. So one cool other thing is to construct these heat maps with the uh, hyperparameters explored, where the red regions correspond to high classification performance and the blue correspond to really poor uh, classification performance. So these are some of the search algorithms used to search for in these discrete search spaces that make up deep neural networks. You have random search, grid search, Bayesian optimization, evolution, reinforcement learning, and differentiable search. In this hyperband paper, they're going to use random search, but they're going to speed it up through the use of this hyperband strategy of resource allocation. So early stopping is the mechanism used here to save computation, but sometimes early stopping can fail. As shown in this picture, Early on in, say, uh, 30 epochs, it's unclear which function is about to perform better. The v1 function is actually a little ahead of the v2 at that moment. So if you early stop there, you would conclude that v1 is, I'm, I'm sorry, v2 is better than v1. But if you, you know, train all the way to convergence, you would eventually find out that v1 is better than v2. So early stopping can be problematic sometimes. And so you would think about these, the metadata on the behavior of the convergence. You can imagine a behavior set where the hyperparameter configuration either fails epically immediately, like you have a dramatically terrible learning uh, loss, and then it just stays that way for the first 20 epochs. It could be slow to improve, and then it could improve very quickly. So in the previous case, the v1 function was slow to improve. So one way of uh, adapting for these different kinds of behavior sets that different configurations can have would be successive halving, where you uniformly allocate a hyperparameter configuration budget, evaluate the configurations, throw out the worst half, and then continue, continue that like tournament style uh, optimization all the way until you just have one hyperparameter configuration remaining. So the issues with successive halving is uh, it's like how many configurations should you consider? And then it's like this uniform allocation doesn't really explore the different behavior sets that they can have with their convergence. So hyperband says randomly distribute the resources rather than uniformly distribute the resources. And this sort of allows you to explore the different convergent behaviors that could be inherent in each uh, hyperparameter configuration. So this is the entire hyperband algorithm, and it's a little confusing to plug in numbers for R eta and then go through calculating all the values of the different parameters. But the high-level idea is that there's an outer loop that defines the uh, number of configurations to throw away at each iteration and the number of resources to allocate, like the maximum number of resources as you uh, distribute it uh, stochastically. So here's a simpler idea to, rather than the algorithm to demonstrate it. So if you imagine you have a budget B of 500 epochs and you have 16 configurations, then you need four rounds if you're keeping the top half at each iteration. So you imagine chunking B into four bins so you have 125 epoch resources for each evaluation run. So then you would randomly distribute 125 epochs amongst the configurations in each uh, tournament round, compared to just distributing 125 over n to each configuration. 
And you could also imagine uh, repeating this like k times to have a real assurance of the uh, correct distribution of this, which might make let you get away with using less uh, epochs if you repeat it over and over again. So this is an example of a resource allocation where you might have, uh, you know, n is the number of configurations and then r would be the resources of like each one in that bucket. So like in the first set, like 81 would have one resource and then one would have 81, three would have 27. So it's sort of like a weird idea, but this is kind of the idea of uh, hyperband. So these are some of the discrete search spaces that they test in their hyperband paper. So with the MNIST uh, lacoon net example, they test the learning rate on this log scale where it can go from 1e minus 3 to 1e minus 1. And the log scale just means that it doesn't go from like uh, 0 0.001 to 0 0.003. It goes on the log scale of 0 0.001, 0 0.01, 0 0.1. So they test the batch size and they test the number of hidden units in these two layers. And similarly, this is what the AlexNet search space would look. They would look like they have the initial learning rate, they have the uh, regularization of each of the layers, and then they have the scheduler of reducing the learning rate. So another thing they talk about frequently is that uh, there is a non-stochastic banded algorithm, and they sort of I found this to be a weird uh, kind of idea. It's like is classification performance really non-stochastic? And I don't think it is because you have initialization, the curriculum, like the order in which the training set is presented to the model, and then the augmentation, like data augmentation parameters are largely stochastic as well. So I do think that it is a stochastic bandit setting, meaning that um, because you have initializations can really, really dramatically change how a model performs. Even if you have the same configuration, you're not gonna get the same result multiple times. So I think it's really important to repeat the hyperband algorithm. So thanks for watching this idea on hyperband. Hyperband is an idea to speed up neural architecture search through this idea of some kind of strategic uh, resource allocation such that you can, you know, explore the conver convergence uh, behaviors quickly and get a sense of which one is going to be worth allocating more resources to. If you like this video, I recommend another video made in Henry AI Labs, Neural Architecture Search. This will show you how you can design a discrete search space for things like neural, uh, neural cells or like the layers. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.